Um, so we have started recording um, and there is also a transcription um, available which may pop up for you. If you don't want to see the transcript, feel free just to close the little X in the corner if it's distracting for you. Um, I'm aware that some of you will be seeing things a little bit differently. Um, you may not be able to see everybody. When I share my screen, hopefully you will be able to see the screen and potentially me as the presenter. Um, Teams works differently to Zoom and we're all still learning this. So Teams doesn't show me everybody either, unfortunately. Um, so Alan is sharing some tips perhaps that might help you um, navigate your view a little bit better. Um, obviously Teams will be something that's new to many of us and I'm sure is something that we as an organisation may be able to support you with in terms of working out some of these slightly different functions um, to how they work a little bit differently to, to Zoom, which we've previously um, used. So I'm just going to share my screen now um, and hopefully you can all see my slides. Yep. Um, excellent, I'm seeing some nodding heads so that's always a good sign. So welcome, um, this is our third now of these webinars and um, so we started these in November last year um, and as I mentioned, they're really intended to give you a bit of an overview and an update on the impact that volunteering activity has had across the organisation in the previous six months. So the six month period that we're looking at this time round is really comes from April um, right through to September time. So the previous session we held in March um, covered the previous six months and so we're picking up where we left off really um, in terms of the, the period we're covering. So from April of this year. The aim that we have as an organisation is to put the impact that we have into the context of our mission and what we're trying to achieve as an organisation. Um, those of you that read our social accounts will be familiar with the idea of a theory of change, which is our plan of how we hope to achieve our mission. So it's the, the, the kind of the journey, if you like, that we're going on to try and achieve our mission. Um, our mission, which you'll see there, um, around the improvement in the livelihood of people as they trade their way out of poverty. So this is really what we as an organisation are trying to achieve. It's what um, everybody involved in shared interest is, is working towards um, in your roles as volunteers. It's what you're doing, what you're volunteering for. It's how you're um, supporting us in, in achieving that mission. So it's always helpful for us to sort of think about this in that context. So just some examples then of some of the activity that you have been carrying out um, over the last six months. Um, we're starting off with some data entry. So um, one of the activities that data entry volunteers have supported us with is the entering of responses to a customer survey that we carried out. This survey was with one customer in particular, one of the customers that featured in our upcoming longitudinal case studies. Um, so these are in-depth um, studies of a small number of customers um, that really go into sort of, I suppose, a deep dive, if you like, to really try and understand what impact shared interest has had over a long period of time. So these are customers that we've worked with for over five years um, and really trying to understand a lot more about the, the context and the situation of those customers um, in terms of their situation, but also the influence that working with shared interest has had um, in, that, in that journey and in their situation. So we had support from a couple of data entry volunteers to help enter um, just over 150 responses. Um, which we received from this, this customer cooperative from, from their producers. Um, what that meant we're then able to do is really understand the experiences that those producers have had of change. So really understanding what have been their experiences um, in being involved in that particular um, organisation and really means that we're then giving an element of authenticity and um, accountability to, to the impact that we're hearing from them. We're able to understand that in more detail. What that then relates to in terms of our impact and how we're trying to achieve our mission is it enhances our relationships with our customers. If we can have a greater understanding of their experiences, that helps us build those relationships. 
And indeed, it, it also helps us understand more about the impact that we can have. If we can understand how change has affected them in their situation, that helps us understand a little bit more about what influence shared interest may have had in that change um, and, and being able to understand that, reflect on that and, and see where we can uh, we can take that knowledge to go forward with. Translations. Um, so we've had a couple of different uh, things that our translator volunteers have been working on. Um, one of the biggest um, activities has been most recently the translation of our website. Um, so one of our colleagues is working with um, the majority of our translator volunteers are actually involved in this task to support us in translating our website into French and Spanish. Why this is important is it gives us the ability to communicate effectively with our audiences. So our website is um, kind of as a foundation is in English, um, but obviously we're working with organisations and trying to work with organisations for whom English is not their, their working language. So it's important to us that we can also communicate in, in the other languages of French and Spanish um, to, to make that accessible um, to those audiences. How that helps us in, in terms of our, our progress towards our mission and in putting it in the context of our theory of change. This is about customer communications. Um, so it's about being able to communicate with existing customers, but also potential customers. So organisations that are finding out about shared interest. Um, websites are obviously a great source of information, but it's important for that to be information that is accessible um, to them. It also helps again with those customer relationships. Um, it gives us a, a, a sort of greater um, greater connection really with uh, with customers if we're able to share information in, in a language that they can access. Um, and indeed partnership communication. So there are a whole host of organizations, individuals that will be accessing our website who don't fall into the, the identity of being a customer or a potential customer. So it's also about giving people external to the organization um, access to, to that information that's there on the website as well. So that is an ongoing task that will continue beyond um, the six month period, but it is something that has been started um, since April this year. Um, we have also had support from translators um, in a translation and transcription task. So translation being the, the um, converting the language or the words from one language to another, the transcription being the writing of that. So we've had support from a volunteer who has helped us with translation and transcription of a number of short films. Um, again, these were from one of the customers featured in one of our longitudinal case studies. Um, and so that was really helpful for us to be able to record those films in the language that was comfortable for the person being um, interviewed, um, but also then means that we can make that information accessible to a wider audience, having that translated um, and transcribed to enable us to add subtitles um, to the to the film. So the audio is in Spanish, but there will be um, subtitles added in English to make that as accessible as, it, as, as they can be. Um, Given that I've mentioned these longitudinal case studies a couple of times now, you might be thinking, well, what are these? Where are they? How do we how do we learn from them? Um, they will be coming through our social accounts, um, which will be coming out in the new year. Um, so there will be a lot more um, depth of information about to um, customers in particular, and that will then form a lot of the basis for our communications going forward throughout the year as well. So the, the two organisations featured will um, hopefully become familiar um, to many of you. Um, you'll see them pop up in things like QR, um, on, our, on our website, on social media and those sorts of things. But that information will all come out through to you through, through social accounts in the new year um, as well. So how the translation and transcription of those films has helped us, again, similar to um, the, the data entry um, task mentioned previously, it's really about us being able to understand the situation and experiences of individuals, um, to hear their stories, to hear their experiences um, of, of their situation, but also of their experience um, in relation to, to shared interest as well. 
Um, and again, similarly, that enables us to build strong customer relationships and communications with customers. Um, these are also invaluable in helping us engage with members and yourselves as volunteers. Um, it helps gives, give us um, real evidence, if you like, real kind of understanding of the, the experiences of the organisations and the individuals that, that we're reaching with our finance. So they really do give us that richness of content, richness of information um, to, to see that there. Um, Alan or Emily, I see someone's just arrived into the lobby. Would one of you be able to just let them in, please? That would be great. Um, and then we'll move on to um, some events and engagement um, that has been happening um, in the last uh, few months. Um, so there have been 11 stalls run and talks delivered, um, both face to face and online um, by um, by those of you involved in roles, um, taking that sort of um, event focus to them. What that means is we're introduced to new audiences um, and also we are in contact there potentially with existing supporters as well. Um, we know that uh, feedback from many of you is that you may have met existing members who've come and said hello if you've been at an event, um, which is always nice to um, to yeah be, uh, be present at these things to meet both existing um, members, but also introducing ourselves to new audiences um, as well. What that then leads to is hopefully an increase in membership um, where people perhaps hear about us, they'll go away, do their own research, hopefully be inspired to, to want to take some action and want to get involved in what we're doing. Um, it also helps us engage existing members and yourselves as volunteers. Um, for many of you, as to say, that sort of event um, activity is, is, is really the activity that, that you're um, volunteering to do. Um, and also through increased membership, it, hopefully brings us a, an increase in share capital that we're um, able to then lend out to uh, to our customers, um, existing and potentially new customers as well. Continuing the events um, and engagement activity, um, on the left hand side there you can see um, volunteers Rosie and Martin at Greenbelt. Um, so we attended Greenbelt um, again in the summer and um, it takes place over the bank holiday weekend in August and is a huge um, festival um, taking place in, in sort of um, central England near Northampton um, in that area of the world. Um, it is an event that's been taking place for a number of decades. Um, they have a big anniversary um, event coming up next year. We attended in 2019 with a stall, um, as you can see Rosie and Martin there um, in the, the sort of the tent um, stall that we had set up again this year um, for various reasons, including obviously the national lockdowns that we experienced. The event hasn't taken place since 2019, so 2022 was the first time it had happened for a few years. Um, and this was a great opportunity for, for us to be present and we couldn't have done that without the support of a number of volunteers who supported us. Um, in, in covering shifts to, to cover the stall over the four days of the event. Um, and it was, a, it was a really great event to be part of and to be at. We had great conversations with um, existing members, but also with potential members. So we, we continue to keep an eye on, on what um, activity we've seen as a result of attending that. Um, and on the right hand side there, you can see some um, activity of um, a stall in a library um, that a couple of our, our volunteers have set up um, quite recently, um, just to give you a bit of an example of what uh, what people have been doing um, over the time as well. And you can also see there the number of new accounts that have been opened and the increase in share capital over the same time period as well, to put it into perspective, perhaps a little bit of what this has, what this has achieved, um, which is hopefully helpful. A little bit then on what we have done um, to engage with, with you all. Um, so earlier in the period, so in June, um, some of you will be aware that this marks Volunteers Week, um, which is a national UK event um, and really an opportunity for organisations that involve volunteers to celebrate the contributions of volunteers across their organisations. Um, we ran a volunteer festival 
um, which took place over three days um, at the, the beginning of June. Um, we had online sessions, the festival all took place online and we had sessions from a number of um, colleagues, some of you as volunteers participated and, and shared some experiences and skills that you had. Um, and we also invited some external speakers. So the, the screenshot that you can see there is from um, Helen Tandy, who represents Eco Communities UK. She was talking a bit about her experience of volunteering and shared some more information about her work with the Carbon Literacy project um, so really sharing a bit more about the kind of environmental actions that we can take as individuals which was uh, very well received um, and also of course the card and um, thank you gift the the um, personalized bar of chocolate that we sent to you all as well so we hope you uh, enjoyed um, both of those the festival and indeed the, the chocolate um, that we sent um, we also held our first volunteer meetup for some time. Um, so this was a hybrid event, this new terminology that we're all getting familiar with. Um, so this was an event we held in London face to face. So you can see us in the room there um, with, uh, with a number of volunteers who joined us in person. And then also on the screen there, you can see a number of volunteers who joined, much as you are all joining today um, from the comfort of their own homes to, to be able to participate. Um, and that was a great session, a great opportunity to um, catch up with everybody, see how everybody's doing, but also in this session particularly we had um, input with our colleagues Laura and Stina who were looking for some feedback on a number of publications um, that they work on and produce so there was a lot of um, useful conversation around that which I know Laura and Stina have implemented some of the the outcomes from those conversations and are continuing to do so as well which is uh, which is really helpful and a really valuable opportunity for for everybody involved we hope to to participate in that um, as well, which was was great, and and I'm pleased to say the technology stayed with us, and it seemed to 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 work well as a hybrid event. So, um, something that we may look to um to to continue depending on what uh, what requirements we might have. Um, so that was a, a a nice opportunity. It was a very hot day, if I recall, in London. It was a a very uh, hot summer's day in the middle of August, which was uh, which was nice, but um meant we were all making efforts to keep cool um in the room. Um, and then something else that we carried out um, in the period of the volunteer survey. Um, so this went out to everybody and thank you very much to, to those of you who responded. Um, the image that you can see there is really uh, what's known as a word cloud. Um, so one of the questions we asked in the survey, and indeed it's a question that we are asked as um, staff colleagues of shared interest in a similar survey that, that we complete, is to name three words of what it's like to be part of shared interest. So what does your experience of, of being involved with shared interest um, mean to you? What, what sort of um, words do you associate with that? Um, so the larger the word, the more people who said it. Um, so it was really encouraging to us to, to read that um, words like worthwhile, enjoyable, rewarding, fulfilling, useful, are, um, are all coming through strongly from, from those who answered. Um, we are also um, obviously aware that there are um, some terms there that we may want to understand a little bit more about um, and, and obviously look to see how we can um, do things differently, perhaps to to um, yeah in, inspire you all to uh, to feel a, a key part of, of what you're doing and, and feel valued and, and, and you feel value from your volunteering as well. Um, so those sorts of things are always really useful. Um, some of the quotes I just wanted to share with you um, that came through from the, the volunteer survey and, and feedback that people gave us through that. Um, shared interest gave me an insight into how cooperatives work. I have used this knowledge to help set up our village shop as a consumer cooperative. So perhaps an unexpected um, outcome of volunteering with us, but nonetheless a, a very valuable one. It has been good to feel that I'm helping further shared interests, aims and activities. On a personal note, it has helped me keep up and where grammar is concerned, refresh my language skills. So that coming from one of our translator volunteers. Um, explaining the, the benefits they feel to themselves and their own skills, but also what they feel they're bringing to the organisation as well. Um, and then finally, I have really enjoyed telling people about the organisation and what it does. 
um, which is fantastic. It, it should always be about enjoyment. Um, and as you see there on the screen, enjoyable and worthwhile are obviously key words that have come through, which is which is great. That's what we're here to do is hope that you have uh, enjoyable experiences while you're doing what you do with us. Um, so just um, to leave you then with a couple of dates for your diaries, um, many of you I'm sure will be aware that COP27 is happening at the moment. Um, there will probably be all sorts of uh, things that you're involved with that are, are leading you to, to various things happening there. But just for those of you who, who hadn't picked up on that, something that you might be interested in and, and just having a look to see what you can find of, of relevance there. Um, we know that it's an issue um, that is of interest to many. Um, so there's nothing specific around shared interest in that, but just to, to sort of draw it to your attention. Um, then some dates into 2023. Um, so the social accounts that I've mentioned already will be published in the new year in January alongside our annual review. Um, we know that they're quite useful documents, um, particularly for those of you who are um, out talking to people, engaging with people. Um, they really do feed into a lot of the resources and information that you can have access to. Um, Fair Trade Fortnight, um, a key sort of time in uh, in our calendar as an organisation, but again, particularly for those of you who are doing event activities um, next year, 27th of February to the 12th of March um, for that. Um, the Shared Interest AGM, I believe, on the 17th of March. Um, World Fair Trade Day, um, the 13th of May. It's always the second Saturday in May, which falls um, on, on that. Um, and Volunteers Week, the 1st to the 7th of June, um, again, which is, is a, a consistent um, activity there. So I hope that gives you a bit of a flavour of what's happened, what's coming up. Um, another date that we mark um, within shared interest is International Volunteer Day um, on the 5th of December. And that's something that we um, mark internally within our, our colleague team to really share with colleagues um, much of what we've shared with you that just now, actually, in terms of sharing an update with colleagues about what um, what volunteers have been doing and um, the types of activities you're all involved with um, some of that information from the volunteer survey, for example, um, so that so that we can represent you to to our staff colleagues um, as well. So thank you um, for joining us. Um, as I mentioned um, at the start, I will now stop sharing my screen um, and pass over to Alan, who has a few words that he just wants to say. Thanks, Sally. It's been a busy, but there's a busy year for everyone. I can see and it's really nice to see everyone. Um, a lot of familiar faces who I haven't seen for over a year. Um, so